Okay, and we're back where we left off. Let's pick this back up. So what we have here is with any line, we have a, be- a beginning point, an end point, and then our midpoint, and we had this number one. What this basically means is that at, at this midpoint of our line, of our demand curve, we are at unitary elasticity. All right, it's unitarily, unitary elastic, unitary, unitary elasticity, which basically means that this is one for one. Uh, a, ra- a, ra- a rise in price or a change in price of 1% will give us a change in quantity, de- quantity demanded. So I'm getting tongue tied. Quantity demanded of 1%. So it's one for one. And that is at exactly our midpoint. Okay, now what about these two points here? Okay, at this point, which one of these do you guys think it is? Let's see who's paying attention. What do we have here? Is this perfectly inelastic? Because it's going to be one of these two, right? It's going to be either zero or infinity. Which one is it? Which one, which one, which one? If you said infinity, we need to have you in a different uh, remedial class, I guess. No, I'm just joking. So it's, it's here. That wasn't, what am I thinking? Totally inappropriate. Okay, here we go. This is our zero. Let me do this in blue. Down here, that's purple, blue. Okay, down here, this is zero. Down here, we're at infinity. So what we see is that as we go up our line, our number's increasing, right? So this section here is zero to one. This section here looks like a little whale if you look at it sideways. Let me change that. This section here is one to how oh, I always get that guy a little messed up. This is one to infinity. Okay, so now we've basically found our five points here, right? You see that? Because this is one. We'll start right here. Okay, this is right here. We're perfectly inelastic. Then we come up zero to one. That's this section inelastic. Then we at at uh, one. We're actually unitary elastic. And then from one to infinity right here this is elastic and then at um, when, we, when we actually uh, intersect with our price remember this is our price up here when our demand curve actually intersects and hits this line this is where we're at infinity so you can see that we've actually found a way let me find another color here to make this even more neat this is one right this is point two this is point three this is point four and this is point five so we found a very cool way to, um, you know, to, to graph these different points of, uh, of elasticity, right? So let's take this a step further now, and let's look at an actual graph, what, what this uh, tells us about our standard uh, demand curve. So what we see is a demand curve is like this usually, but what, we, what is going to determine the elasticity of it, what's going to determine how elastic this is, is the steepness of that curve. So for example here, if the curve is wide, it's going to be relatively elastic, right? There's going to be a big difference. But if the curve is, what's the other choice? What's our other option? Let's look at this curve. The wider this curve is, so let, let me erase that. Think of it this way. If our curve looks like that, okay, that means that if we have P1 and P2 again, P1 comes here, and then P2, mess that up, P2 comes here. We can actually kind of visually see, and this is all drawn to scale with my artistic, uh, incredibly accurate uh, freeform handwriting, but we can see that there's a pretty big disparity already just by kind of glancing at that, at that, uh, that part of the line, right? So what we ideally want to see, at least from the standpoint of Jack, is we want to see... A more what type of line do we want to see? What what shape should it be? If we were to describe the shape, right? We want this line to be a lot more like this, right? You may think that it's going to be completely like that, but that's not the case. It's not going to be totally vertical. What we want to see is a line that's more like that, or let's say like that, okay? Because at this point, look what happens when we go we come out here and we hit this. Let's say this is our P1 here. When we hit our P1, we come down, and this is our quantity one, right? Now when we have our P2, which is right here, and we come out from our P2, look at this. There's barely a difference in our quantity demanded. Now if we come up here for our P3, let's say we really raise, wow, look at that three. Let, 
<laughs> that was even a crazier three. Okay, we come up here for our P3. Look what's happening. Is that as we come out here, we hit our, this is our, remember, this is D1 here. Um, uh, this is, as we hit this and we come down, we're seeing, I mean, look, Q1, Q2, and Q3. I, I'm having, I have to move my, uh, this is Q3. Look at the difference here between these three from Q1 to Q3. This is a very small difference, but look at the difference in price. So if, the, <clears throat> excuse me, I had water. I was thinking, you know what, I'll make it this one without uh, getting a sip, but I guess I should have gotten some water. Okay, look at this change in price. This is relatively dramatic compared to this, what seems to be microscopic change in our demand here, right? This is a very tiny change in our quantity demanded, right? But look at that compared to our change here. So what this tells us is that in this, like in an inelastic curve, this is where you can change your prices and you see a relatively, uh, a very a decreased, a very slow, not nearly as dramatic amount of change in your uh, quantity demanded. Now let's go back to um, what this tells us right here, right? This chart right here tells us that both of these graphs, that's what's really cool here, is that this this uh, part of the demand curve, this is actually part of a much larger demand curve, right? That's what we learned a second ago, that this demand curve right here, the one that we've been looking at, the one that we've been talking about this whole time, about this, this in inelastic one, this is also a much longer curve. And what we are looking at is, in fact, just the bottom half of a much larger demand curve. And if we were to look at the top half, where this this part right here, if we were to look at that half and we were to plot that here on this same this same chart and using the same demand curve but just a different segment of it, we would have a much more um I guess I should do it in black because we use black. We would have a much more elastic. We would have it would be by definition it would be elastic because it's above our uh above our unitary elastic line, above the midpoint. Does that make sense? So at this point, the P3, the P1, if we were to plot those over, there would be a much bigger difference, okay? And I, this demand curve is still actually in the same place. I'm only moving it over here just to show you something, just to show you that it's the same, that it's the same graph, which is pretty crazy because what that tells us is that if we come back to here, the only difference between having inelastic or uh, elastic quantity demanded or having a, you know, in, in Jack's case, having the business where your, your, your sales are that sensitive to a change in price isn't necessarily the demand curve, the market or anything like that. It's the segment of the demand curve that we're looking at. Does that make sense? If we're up here, we're elastic. If we're down here, we're inelastic, right? So let's finish this up because uh, we're running out of time. Big surprise, right? Let's come back here. Let's look at basically how this is uh, essentially plotted. Let's go over here and let's look at the first P1 and Q1. Let's say we shade this area in here, and that represents X. Okay, we're going to call Jack's revenue here, Jack's revenue here X. Okay, now for this uh, P2, let's shade this in with red. All this section. This is basically price times quantity. Now we can tell because we've got an easy chart and easy numbers that this does not make sense. So in this case, we know that X is greater than Y, right? X is greater than Y. And what that means basically is any change in price, because he raised it 1%, there's a 2% change in quantity demanded, that this is elastic, right? If it were inelastic, that means that Y would be greater than X. He could raise his price, and the quantity demanded wouldn't change enough to make a difference, and he would ultimately still be better off. So that's when Y is greater than X. And that's when, we, if Y is equal to X, then what do we have? Then we have our, our midpoint, right? That's one, right? So we can tell where we are on the demand curve here by the, or it's kind of either or. This isn't, uh, this is, you know, how we determine, this is inelastic, this is elastic. Then when we come back here to our, we're running out of time. I got to hurry up here. This is um, this is where we're going to be perfectly elastic, perfectly inelastic midpoint. This is where we have elasticity. This is where we have inelasticity, and um, this is ultimately where we want to be. This is where Jack's business wants to be. But let's talk in terms of more of the. Uh, oh, we got to wrap this up. Okay, 
We'll finish this up in the next episode. All right, we'll we'll keep talking about this in the next video. Hope that helps, guys. We'll talk soon.